I'm Louise Huffman from the University of Nebraska-Lincoln, the Andrel Science Management Office. There are two, we did two lessons. So the first one was um, how does melting ice affect sea level? So the teachers had um, containers that they put rocks on one side that represented land and then water on the other side to represent ocean. And they had one of those containers that was, they put ice on the land side. So that was land-based ice like glaciers and ice sheets. And then they had another container that ice was floating in the water on the ocean side. And that would have represented icebergs and floating ice shelves that are coming off the continent of Antarctica and Greenland. And then they leave, they mark the water after the ice is in and let it melt and they make a prediction, will the land-based ice raise sea level if it all melts? So all the ice that's in Antarctica, all the ice that's on Greenland, if that melts and flows into the ocean, will the ocean levels rise? Then in the floating ice, the Arctic sea ice is melting at an extremely rapid rate, faster than was even predicted a few years ago. Will that raise sea level though? This year, 2012, was the least September sea ice extent on record. So did our sea levels, are we expecting sea levels to rise from that? So that's the question that the kids try to answer with this model. Then they come back to it after the ice melts and they look. Does, it ri does the water rise in both containers? Does it stay the same or does it, is it lowered by the change in the ice? And then they, uh, so they've made a prediction and now they can take a look at what their what their model has done and then talk about what, what that means in the real world.